This is the model of the spinal cord. It is an anterior view and the vertebrae have been removed so we can see the spinal cord here in the vertebral canal. You'll notice that the spinal cord ends at about L1, L2 because during development the spinal cord stops growing and the vertebral canal continues to grow. Running down the front of the spinal cord we have the anterior median fissure. The spinal cord is held from moving laterally by extensions of pia mater called denticulate ligaments. It is also held vertically by another extension of pia mater called the final turbinal that runs from the tapering end of the spinal cord down to the coccygeal ligament. This is our exposed spinal cord. The outermost layer of the meninges is the dura mater. And upon the dura mater, we have the epidural space, which contains fat. And if you're given an epidural injection, this is where the medication is put. The next layer of the meninges is the arachnoid matter, which is this thin spider-webby material that goes all the way around the brain and the spinal cord. In the subarachnoid space, the cerebral spinal fluid circulates. The third and deepest layer of the meninges is the pia mater, and the pia mater is a microscopic covering of the brain and the spinal cord. However, there are a couple of places where we can see it because laterally we have these triangular extensions of the pia mater, which are called denticulate ligaments, and they hold the spinal cord from moving to side and side. At the very end, we have another extension of pia mater, which is called the phylum terminal, which goes from the tapering tip of the spinal cord down to the coccygeal ligament. On each side of the spinal cord, we can see that we have the sympathetic trunk ganglion here. As the spinal cord ends, it comes down to a point, and the tapering end is called the conus medullaris. The tapering end of the spinal cord is called the conus medullaris. And then extending beyond that, we have motor and sensory roots, which is collectively called the cordia equina. On the anterior surface, we have motor roots that are coming from the spinal cord, going to innervate various muscles. And on the posterior that we can't see, we have sensory roots coming up and going to the spinal cord. Now, let's take a closer look. As we rotate from an anterior view, we can now see a cross-section of the spinal cord. At the front, we have our anterior median fissure, and at the posterior, we have the posterior median sulcus. The cross-section of the spinal cord shows that we have white matter on the outside, which contains myelinated axons, which carry information up and down the spinal cord. And deep to that, we have the gray matter. We have the anterior gray horn, which is responsible for innervating skeletal muscles, the lateral gray horn, which is responsible for innervating smooth muscle glands and cardiac muscle of the sympathetic nervous system. And we have the posterior gray horn, which is receiving sensory information. Connecting the two sides of gray matter, we have the gray commissure. And running in the middle here, we have the central canal where the cerebral spinal fluid circulates. Sensory information is coming in. It goes into the posterior root ganglion where the cell bodies of the sensory cells are. And it continues and it enters the spinal cord at the posterior gray horn. Motor information is initiated in the anterior or the lateral gray horn. It travels down the anterior root and out. The spinal nerve is this area between here and here, where the anterior root and the dorsal root meet is the start of the spinal nerve, and then where the ventral rami and the dorsal rami branch off is the end. The spinal
spinal nerve is this area between here and here, where the anterior root and the dorsal root meet is the start of the spinal nerve, and then where the ventral rami and the dorsal rami branch off is the end. Unfortunately, the dorsal rami has broken off, but we can see it down here. We also have these two processes, which are the rami communicantes, which are parts of the sympathetic nervous system. Most laterally here, we have the white rami, which is myelinated axons coming out, and medial, we have the gray rami, which is carrying unmyelinated axons back into the spinal nerve pathway. This model shows the cross-section through the spinal cord, and it also includes the vertebrae and some of the surrounding structures. A little bit of uh, bone anatomy review. We can see that the transverse process has these transverse foramen, so this vertebrae has to be a cervical vertebrae. And we'll also notice that the spinous process is bifurcated, so this isn't C7, and it's definitely not C1 or C2, so it's C3, C4, C5, or C6. We can see that we have the spinal cord in the middle. And around here, we have the meninges and various spaces. The yellow area here is the epidural space. And if you are receiving an anesthetic called an epidural, this is where the medication will be placed. Deep to that, we have the dura mater which we can see going all the way around here. And then deep to the dura matter, we have the arachnoid matter. Beneath the arachnoid matter, we have the subarachnoid space, which is where the cerebral spinal fluid circulates. And then finally, we come to the last layer of the meninges, the pia matter, which is a microscopic covering of the spinal cord. On the front of the spinal cord, we have the anterior median fissure, and we can see that the pia matter invaginates into the fissure. On the posterior of the spinal cord, we have the posterior median sulcus. The spinal cord itself consists of white matter around the outside, and deep to the white matter is gray matter. The higher, the closer to the spinal cord, I mean the closer to the brain that you go, the more white matter that you have. The gray matter is composed of the anterior gray horns, which innervate skeletal muscle. We have the lateral gray horns, which innervates the sympathetic nervous system. And we have the posterior gray horns, which receive sensory information. Connecting the two sides of the gray matter, we have the gray commissure. And then running up and down the middle of that, we have the central canal where cerebral spinal fluid also circulates. Sensory information comes in. We can see that we have the posterior root ganglion here, where the neural cell bodies of the pseudo-unipolar axons are. The sensory information is carried via the posterior root, which branches into rootlets and enters the posterior gray horn. Motor is initiated either on the anterior gray horn or the lateral gray horn. It comes out the anterior aspect of the spinal cord to our anterior roots. The anterior root and the posterior root join together to form the spinal nerve. The spinal nerve only remains the spinal nerve until the dorsal rami and the ventral rami split off. So the spinal nerve is very short. The dorsal rami does sensory to the skin of the back, and it innervates the deep muscles of the back. The ventral rami innervates the superficial muscles of the back and everything else on the front. We can also see branching off the ventral rami, the gray rami here, which is part of the sympathetic nervous system. On each side here, we have a sympathetic trunk ganglion. 
And since this is a cervical vertebrae, it is connected to the ganglion beneath it, and information comes up the ganglion, and then for the spinal nerve pathway, the, it is communicated down the gray rami, and it joins the spinal nerve to go to the end effector. I got my mind set on you. I got my mind set.